college kid and my parents were teachers and made me had have summer jobs and I learned a lot just working for other people, sales, customer service, managing people, but I always just hated working for a, a boss and I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what I would do or, or what business to start and I when I was in college I started buying and selling people's textbooks competing with my school bookstore. That was my first real entrepreneur journey and I I got a cease and desist letter from my college telling me to knock it off and stop competing with them. Uh, at that point, I had lined out the door of people trying to sell me their books. And I had this Amazon account that was really, I mean, this is 2008. So people were just buying books on Amazon. Amazon was just getting into other stuff. And I had an Amazon account that I was selling books on to make more than the bookstore. And I started experimenting with other products and finding deals online and trying to find a niche that, that I could actually make money on. And I experimented with everything from DVDs, video games, like sporting equipment, guy stuff until finding baby products and toys, if you can imagine that. Um, and it's funny, I, I just had a kid four months ago and I'm buying all the same stuff that I used to sell uh, back in the day, 10 years ago. So I this business blew up. I mean, it was better than, than anyone could expect it. I, I was probably making more money than any college kid should. It was just a great timing. Amazon was bursting out of the scenes. There were no Amazon courses, no Amazon sellers, not, no Amazon software. None of that existed. I had to be one of the first 1,000 um, Amazon sellers selling things that, that weren't books. And I, I grew this business. I, I came across dropshipping years before I even knew it was called dropshipping. I built relationships with all these different U.S. suppliers that would ship products to where I, where I wanted them to. And I would make the difference. They would keep my credit card on file. They didn't know what e-commerce was, so they didn't realize yet that they didn't really need me. And this was a, a great business. And I ended up meeting my business partner, Connor, when, when I needed to start hiring people. He was one of the only hires that actually worked out. All the other college kids were were lazy and, and unreliable. And that kind of brought me into the world of virtual assistants. I, I hired my first VA from the Philippines on a necessity. I needed help with this growing business. And there wasn't a lot of software back then. So there was a ton of manual work from customer service to changing prices, updating inventory. And I built the, this VA army. And at that time, Connor, my partner, and I, we, we thought we were going to take down Amazon and be the next e-commerce giant. And we, Amazon got harder. All of a sudden, people started selling courses and uh, learning how to master Amazon in different ways and more sellers burst out of the scenes. And so we never launched our own products. We were always selling other people's products. So And eventually, that just became not as fun of a business. I mean, we maxed out at about $7 million a year. We sold $25 million over seven, eight years. Great cash cow for a college kid, but we didn't see the, we didn't see a long-term plan with it just because e-commerce was becoming um, more competitive. Well, meanwhile, we had all these VAs and, and they all knew Amazon and we started offering them to all these e-commerce sellers and that became free up um, a marketplace competing with Upwork and Fiverr. It started off as very e-commerce focused, pre-vetted e-commerce freelancers and VAs. We eventually branched out of that. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. It was our first B2B business. We weren't relying on Amazon and their changes. We had our own website. We got to learn branding and partnerships and SEO and all the stuff that, that goes into a B2B business, uh, as you know. And, and th again, this, this business timing is, is everything, right? I mean, back then there weren't a lot of agencies. Now there's a lot of them. Uh, there weren't that many like freelancers and VAs promoting services on social media. So we had this select group of, of great VAs and freelancers that we were offering to other people. We, we scaled this business for four years, skipping ahead. We can dive into it more if you want. Uh, we got it to about $12 million a year, very profitable, very cash flow positive, no debt. We started it with five grand. And we ended up exiting it to a company uh, called The Hoth, which was the, the most stressful uh, six months of my life. And I mean, The Hoth are great people. We, we sold it to really good people that honored their word and treated our, our team well and our clients well and paid us every penny and all the stuff that's important in a deal. And we're still friends with them today. But that allowed us to, to figure out what we want to do next. And we decided to start building a portfolio of B2B businesses. I mean, for four years, all we did was free up, eat, sleep, breathe. And now we had an opportunity to build different things and hire operators to just from day one to run those businesses. So we have outsource school that we don't provide VAs, but we have our unique hiring process for interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing all of our SOPs that people can get access to and plug it into their business. We've got two bookkeeping businesses, accounts balance and econ balance. 
I'm not a bookkeeper, uh, but we have a great team of bookkeepers and a controller there where we do monthly bookkeeping for um, tons of e-commerce businesses, but then accounts balances, agencies, SaaS, other types of businesses there. We've got Trio SEO, which is our SEO blog writing service, and we've got more coming. My, my business partner, Connor, is connorgilvin.com, where he sells an SEO course. I'm launching nathanhirsch.com. we got other business ideas coming up. But um, yeah, that's a, the long, short version of, of me as an entrepreneur. But right now, I'm just trying to build a portfolio of B2B companies and use my personal brand to push people to, to what they need.